All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today we're continuing concepts and principles with identify ways behavioral momentum can be used to understand response persistence. Now, if you were a technician, you probably consider behavior momentum through the lens of a high P, low P request sequence because that's how it's most commonly referred to and used. But as an analyst, behavior momentum can tell you a lot about why behavior may be continuing even if you're putting it on extinction or even if you're using punishment. So we're going to look at those ideas in an easy, digestible way to help you pass your exam and become a better practitioner. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. So behavior momentum is the idea that behavior has a tendency to continue in its current state once it has started, particularly after reinforcement. In other words, once we can get behavior moving in a certain direction, let's say that's a positive direction, the direction we want to see, if we can start to deliver reinforcement to the learner, then the idea is the behavior will continue in that current state. Now, as the analyst, you always want to view these ideas from the other side, as in, yes, we can get behavior moving in the direction we want, but we've also got to consider what if behavior is not moving in the direction we want? What if there are negative behaviors we are seeing? Well, negative behaviors or problem behaviors can also build up behavior momentum. And so you've got to keep that in mind when you're looking at why behavior is persisting, both behaviors you want and behaviors you don't want. So if you can get the behaviors you want to see started, quote unquote, they can continue as you make further requests. What you want to avoid is getting behaviors you don't want to see started because those tend to continue. Think about if you've worked with a client who has a small tantrum or meltdown or whatever you want to call it, they just, for a brief period, they get upset. Now, if we can stop that immediately, then we can move on. But if you've ever been in a situation where it just continues to build and build and build, and then it seems there's nothing you can do to get it stopped, well, a lot of times that can be attributed to behavior and momentum. So don't just view this through the lens of those skill acquisition targets. Behavior and momentum also provides easy opportunities to deliver reinforcement to the learner or client. Once again, if we're seeing behaviors that we wanna see, especially high probability behaviors, we can quickly and effectively get reinforcement to the client in a way that we can build positive momentum. Now, how, that, how does this tie to response persistence? Response persistence is the tendency for behavior to resist disruption, even if reinforcement changes or there is competing stimuli. So again, let's look at this first from a skill acquisition target, right? A behavior we want to see. When we are teaching behavior, what are, we what are we aiming for? We're aiming for generalization and maintenance. It's more likely that behavior will maintain if there is response persistence. So we need to develop and strengthen those responses so they persist even if we fail at reinforcement or if the environment changes. Because you've got to consider, and as we always do, when we're teaching, we're in a very controlled environment typically. We need that behavior to persist in the natural environment despite what obstacles our clients may face. So behavior momentum that is acquired through reinforcement contributes directly to response persistence. Think about when a learner answers a question wrong or is interrupted by something in the environment. You can be on a very good roll, right? Let's say we answered five in a row correctly and they get one wrong or there's a, a noise that distracts them, quickly they can go off track, right? Those responses we were seeing, if they're not strong, if they're not persistent, we can quickly lose track of what we're trying to do. The more response persistence, the more likely it is that given a disruption or a change in reinforcement, the more likely the response is to continue. Now again, response persistence can also be for behaviors we don't want to see. So whenever you're analyzing behavior, think about what's adding to the momentum of this behavior 
And why is the behavior persistent or why is it not? So let's actually talk about this intervention, right? The high P request sequence. It's that fundamental intervention where high probability requests are delivered, followed immediately by a low probability request. It's as simple as this example, right? We have touch your nose, clap your hands, stand up. Now these three high P requests, we have some stipulations. One, they have to be reliably evoked, meaning if you ask your client to touch their nose, we need the client to touch their nose, right? It's not a 50-50 chance. We need basically a 100% chance. Two, we're not teaching the high P request. They should already be known. And three, you may want to deliver some reinforcement after each high P request, because as each occur, we're hoping to build more and more, more, more momentum until we actually reach number four, the clean your room, and the low probability target behavior. Compliance with those high probability requests builds momentum. That momentum is then leveraged to increase the likelihood of compliance with the low P request. Some people say, well, isn't this just a trick? Not a trick, it's a strategy, it's an intervention. It's leveraging what we know about momentum and persistence and using it to our advantage. Behaviors that have a history of frequent reinforcement or reinforcement under specific conditions are more resistant to change. And this is when we think about typically, let's say, trouble behaviors or problem behaviors, right? If we have a 12-year-old who's been using crawling under the table for five years to escape, well, that's going to be a lot harder to change. It's going to be much more resistant to change than let's say a 12 year old who climbed under the table for the first time yesterday. The, the history of reinforcement and the environmental history is so much different for the one five years versus one day that they just can't be compared. So you always want to think about, I have this target behavior. It's resistant to change. How long, is, how long has it been going on? What was the reinforcement schedule like? What are we dealing with here? Because when we're trying to put something on extinction, punish something, teach a new behavior. We're dealing with resistance to change from that old behaviors. Those behaviors don't want to go away because in the past they've received reinforcement. So behavior momentum and persistence are tied to resistance to change. Behaviors that have been heavily reinforced, much more resistance to change than behaviors that have not received the same level of reinforcement. Sounds like common sense because it is. It's that simple. Let's think about a child. They always received immediate attention for shouting out answers in class. They're much more likely to continue shouting out even if extinction happens because of this high level or high history of reinforcement. Again, comparing a same, the same kid who yelled out once, well, their resistance to extinction is probably a lot less. And as always, we're not speaking in definitive terms because we're dealing with human behavior. It's all different. But as a general idea, the longer the history of reinforcement, the more resistant to change. So our key takeaways, behavioral momentum. It's behavior's tendency to continue once initiated, particularly after reinforcement. Once behavior starts, it tends to continue. Response persistence, the tendency for behavior to continue despite disruption. So we're fighting environmental change and reinforcement change. How strong is that response is persistence? So how does that connect? Higher behavior momentum typically leads to greater response persistence. And how can we do that? Most often the high P request sequence, we're building momentum for compliance by giving those high probability requests followed by the low P request. Resistance to change, behaviors with strong reinforcement histories or high momentum are more persistent and harder to disrupt. Challenge, challenging behavior often has high momentum due to powerful reinforcement explaining its persistence. And that can explain a lot about why challenging behavior can sometimes be so difficult to get rid of, especially if you're dealing with, let's say, an older client or a client who's had a strong or long history of challenging behavior that has received reinforcement. That's B22 in a nutshell, pretty straightforward but in my opinion, an incredibly important concept when you are evaluating behavior for change. How persistent is it and how resistant is it to change? How can you use the momentum to your advantage? Please subscribe if you aren't already. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com. 
for all of our study materials. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.